Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Mon Wednesday. Wednesday, May 4th, 2016. Thank you, Mr. Byrne. Um, uh, scheduled to begin at 7 p.m. One of our colleagues um, is out of town, Mr. Greeley, and Mr. Dunn is on his way shortly. So what we're going to do, and I apologize for starting a little bit late, um, take care of some of the other agenda items and because of uh, the debt exclusion and legal issues, um, we will uh, refrain on numbers seven and eight until Mr. Dunn arrives, which he should be here any minute. So first, uh, request vote of the board to authorize the town manager to execute contracts for MWRA water bond, bond of $900,000. We have our treasurer and collector of ta taxes here, Mr. Gilligan. And thank you for your patience, gentlemen. Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the board. Uh, the request this evening is for the board to vote to authorize the town manager to execute a contract for a loan agreement with the Massachusetts Water Resource Authority uh, for the amount of $900,000. That $900,000 will be an interest-free loan in the form of a water bond, and it is to, to accommodate a local system water assistance program project that will basically install over 4,000 linear feet of water main uh, along Jason Street, Pleasant View, and Hillside. Uh, the loan is to be repaid over a 10-year period in equal amounts of $90,000 per year. Uh, upon execution of the contract, the MWRA will forward the bond certificates for um, authorization of the closing by the board, and that will take place on Monday, provided there's an approval tonight. Thank you, Mr. Gilligan. Move approval. Mr. Kiro moves approval, seconded by Second. Mr. Byrne. Um, any questions, comments? I'll set Mr. Chapterlane. No, I'm good. Okay. I actually do have a question. Um, and obviously, thank you for your work on this. I was, is this from the new MWRA program that just came out maybe last month that was released? Um, to, it, that they released all the money for new bonds? Yes, the, the MWRA establishes their sewer facilities assistant plan and their local uh, water system plans um, over certain periods of time. So they did not re-up this. Uh, the end of last year. So this is a continuation of a previous program, but it's all new funding. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Any uh, further questions or comment? If not, a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time of the board. And as soon as I get the contracts back from the manager, they'll be overnighted to uh, the MWRA. And I'll see you on Monday night. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, next, we have our consent agenda, uh, minutes of meeting, April 11, 2016, April 25, 2016. A request for a one-day beer and wine license on May 28, 2016 at the Arlington Town Hall for a private wedding, Jessica Fagnoli and Daniel Rosenthal. A request contractor drain layers license, J. White Contracting Inc., 3 Murray Hill Lane, Andover, Mass. A request for contractor drain Layer license NCCLC Enterprises LLC, 21 Water Street in Wakefield, Mass., as well as another request for a contract drain layers license, Tufts Construction Inc., 209 Mystic Avenue in Medford, Mass. Move approval. Moved by Mr. Byrne. Second. Seconded by Mr. Carroll. Any uh, questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Uh, correspondence received. We have a piece of correspondence from Patrick Sackbibit, Professional Engineer, PE, Federal Insurance and Mitigation Administration from FEMA, which is entitled No Revision to the Effective Flood, range, flood Insurance Rate Maps. Move and receipt. Move receipt by Mr. Burns, seconded by Second. Mr. Kiro. Any questions? I just have a question. I'm just wondering this does not indicate any action on our part, does it? No, no it does not. Just receive. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Unanimous vote. Thank you, Mr. Perfect time. time. Yes. That's, I, I started to read quickly as I normally do, and then I thought, you know what? <laughs> Slow down, <laughs> Mahan. <laughs> you have perfect timing, Mr. Dunn. Appreciate well, I it. I have perfect time. I apologize oh, to uh, everyone for being late. We uh, have taken. Agenda item one, the consent agenda items two through six. And we just <coughs> finished up with correspondence received, which Excellent. didn't require any actions. It was just to move receipt. I appreciate you keeping along, moving along, and I apologize again. Oh, no worries. We will now go to agenda item seven. 
Discussion and vote, special town meeting article six, Minuteman School Building Bond Authorization. I'd like to ask our vice chair, Mr. Dunn. Um, actually. It's okay. Do, do you want me to do a brief introduction? Yeah, Mr. Chapter you, uh, line, if you could. Get settled. Uh, so tonight, what's before the board uh, is a discussion and uh, potentially a vote, if the board so chooses, uh, to uh, either vote in support or uh, not in support of moving forward with the currently proposed MSBA Minuteman Building Project. What's attached to this agenda item is the Finance Committee's uh, recommendation to town meeting, which is favorable action contingent upon a successful debt exclusion for the Minuteman project. Uh, and what you see is, uh, what I will say is a, a very well-written and comprehensive report by uh, Chairman of the Finance Committee, Al Tosti, who was on the Board of Selectmen's Minuteman uh, Building Project Assessment Task Force, really lays out what a close call the issue is, what uh, the pros and cons of moving forward are, and what some of the impacts of moving forward would be. Uh, also attached uh, to that report is the proposed vote, historical enrollment at Minuteman, as well as both a low end and a high end of debt projections um, of what uh, Arlington could pay based on lower enrollments from Arlington or higher enrollments from Arlington in relation to the total enrollment of the, uh, of the school. So um, I, I don't want to rehash the, the, the entire discussion, but uh, really, you know, at least from where I, where I come from, where this analysis comes down to is the lack of a clear-cut appropriate alternative uh, seems to inform us that this is, though, though expensive and though certainly also having some risk to it, is a, a safe and appropriate choice to continue providing vocational and technical education to Arlington students. So. I'll close with that, but if, you, if you're ready, Dan, to... I'm good, thank you. Uh, it's worth m uh, mentioning that the task force that we commissioned, uh, at, recommended, I think it was an eight to one, was the final vote in favor of the build option. So uh, we've got a reasonably strong endorsement from that group. We've got an endorsement from FinCom, which is definitely, there are a number of people who are very torn on the issue. My thinking hasn't changed from where I was two weeks ago, where I walked mm. us through you know, the no build option versus the build options and the various grades of good and bad that could come uh, in between. And uh, so I would like to go, I, and I, I, I want the building to be built, and I think that if we um, give our unanimous approval, I think it gives <coughs> it a little bit more chance on town meeting floor on Monday night. So if it's appropriate, I'm ready to make a motion. Mr. Uh, I move that we uh, move favorable action on uh, building the Minuteman building and support the Finance Committee's main motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Burry. Any questions? Um, do you I just want to say one thing that's important. Oh, uh, is that, you know, I, is, is a, that this vote is contingent upon approval of the ballot question, which yes. is our next item. So, we, the, the, sorry. Um, and I, I'm curious in um, what, how, like, how does the actions of other towns play into this? Uh, it's a good question. Um, so, there's no one who has said no yet. There are several towns that are yes town meetings contingent upon uh, debt exclusions, and those are mostly voting this week and next week. Uh, Belmont Town Meeting is voting tonight. Belmont is definitely one of the really tricky ones. Um, even, so let's imagine the Belmont votes no tonight. I still will want us to go forward and say yes on Monday, because there's a couple scenarios where uh, Belmont could be brought to the table on a future vote. And I think it's also, I, th I think we should, we should take a position one way or another. Yeah. yeah. So I, a shorter answer is, if one town votes no, then this particular bond is dead. And, it, and Minuteman has said they will not put it forward to a ballot. Thank you. Mr. Carroll. Th thank you very much. <coughs> um, and I'm, I'm glad to be have the opportunity for us to go on record with this, because uh, I, I do regret that even though I'm a town meeting member, I will be away next week on business, so I won't have an opportunity to weigh in as a, um, as a town meeting member. But Dan, Dan is right. I think a lot of people are torn on this. There are risks. Either way you go on this project, but I think that folks came down um, uh, uh, on the side of this this um, this proposal. 
you know, partially based on, number one, what, what do you get for your money? Um, are we going to do patchwork, you know, over a course of, of years or, or decades with no um, state participation whatsoever? Um, that, you know, there have been proposed uh, improvements to the educational program, um, which is much more of a 21st century educational program. Um, up at the Minuteman, which really are only feasible if, if this building project goes forward. It does shrink the building from what it is now. Um, so even though there's a lot of debate over whether it's right sized, it's better sized than what it is right now. Um, there's also one, one factor that I, you know, I don't think I um, vocalized previously, but um, this is part of our educational offering uh, to our, our students here in Arlington. I could very easily envision a scenario where when we go towards um, renovating the Arlington High School during those few years where there is disruption at the at the Arlington High um, campus that some students may well find that that this is um, a, a good option for them during that that period of time um, to 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 go the Minuteman route if, if the uh, educational program uh, satisfies their needs so um, Thank you very much. You know, Dan has again done you know lion's share of work on this, but um, uh, I appreciate it. And it's, it was a very delicate balance too. And I know Doug had to do a lot of work with uh, Bond Council as well. So I think we have to acknowledge that as well. Okay. Uh, any further questions, comments, <coughs> Mr. Dunn? Yeah. On a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. Unanimous vote. We now come to agenda item eight which is the vote to authorize the debt exclusion questions for uh, June 14th, uh, just as sort of a prelude, and then I'll ask the town manager or town council if there's anything they want to add before we uh, get into our discussion. Um, I met with the Mr. Chapterlane and Mr. Heim around um, the proposed ballot questions. It seems on... Um, the high school feasibility study and the Thompson Gibbs addition renovations um, that that's we seem to have come to agreement on that and hearing from all the board members and, and not only town council and the town manager but town council's consultation with MSBA and, and previous votes in the wording the only thing that I would note I'm taking the two easy ones first because you know I anticipate um, that we'll be in agreement on that is uh, Mr. Chaplain and Mr. Hyman and I have discussed, um, and we haven't done it in the bold face, but under Tom, right now it says Thompson, Gibbs, and Audison additions and renovations. If you look at the actual wording of the vote, it um, cites Thompson School and Gibbs School. We took out the Audison based on the uh, uh, discussions and the vote by the school enrollment task force the other night to request the school committee to have a meeting. Um, which I understand, from, I believe, from Mr. Carroll that they have scheduled for Monday. Monday. This upcoming Monday, um, we took out Audison because it became abundantly clear that <coughs> it was going to be a Gibbs option, just not what it was. And and just about all of the school committee was attending that meeting um, and 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 spoke to that. So what I would like to do on 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 the first two is, if I could, because then we'll get to the meat of the matter. Um, if anyone has any further comments, suggestions um, on the high school feasibility study ballot question or the Thompson Gibbs addition and renovations ballot question. Okay, so let's, oh, Mr. Kira. I no, my only qu question is, um, I, I, I had asked town council about this. I, I believe we have to take separate votes for each of them, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Yes, I did. Mr. Uh, I agree. And I would also like to uh, set the order while we do it. I um, think Thompson Gibbs is first, Ar Arlington High is second, Minuteman third in terms of mm -hmm. whatever. I agree. Order. I was hoping. Okay. And sorry, just so, and we can, uh, the other thing I just want to get, uh, as whoever makes the motion, I hope you include that polls open at 7 a.m., close at 8 p.m. Right. That's okay. a, that was going to be my sorry. question whether we're also. <coughs> including the language to open the polls on, on that date. I did stop by um, the town clerk's office last week and making sure that she was okay with 7 a.m. and she was absolutely fine with it. 
and I did also check with Marie. I did. A, I checked with Marie before I checked with the town clerk. Fine. Important <laughs> to note. Yes. <laughs> and and I do want to note because I know we received some pieces of correspondence um, that we were all cc'd on about why wasn't it a Saturday election? We stated this before. First of all, there are no Saturdays available for town hall in June. They've already been booked far and a year plus in advance uh, for weddings as well as um, getting poll workers. For that, you know, an informal poll indicated that it really was going to be a Herculean task and close to impossible. And so then um, this committee, along with our, others, took into account the last day of school, fifth grade graduation, <coughs> and came up with a day that was least disruptive. Um, so um, I understand that people are used to Saturday elections <coughs> for issues like this, but it, it just wasn't doable. So, um, and I agree with that order. I was hoping, I was saying, oh, you know. Uh, now, when we get, oh, I, before we move on, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Chapterlain or Mr. Heim on either of those. Uh, so I'll go first. I, I th think uh, the board, um, it, it would be important for the board to, to sort of have a public announcement of what the amounts of these debt exclusions would be based on the vote. So the board has been provided a memo that's available on Novus that <clears throat> has a cover memo that outlines the amounts. The Arlington High School Feasibility Study amount that would be proposed to be debt excluded would be $2 million. The amount for the Thompson Elementary School expansion uh, that would pr uh, be proposed to be excluded would be $4 million. The Gibbs renovation would be proposed to be $25 million. And the Minuteman question, though it's yet to be discussed, uh, would be, <clears throat> it's, it's harder to say it's an exact amount because there's a variable amount, but what we would say is the maximum projected impact would be $32 million. Uh, also provided to the board, is a number of uh, charts that show what the dollar for dollar impact would be on the average uh, single family tax bill, uh, shown in several different manners. And uh, these have been put together by Deputy Town Manager Sandy Pooler. Uh, we'll answer any questions about those and if there's any other variations of this that the board would like to see as this debt exclusion discussion goes on, we'd be happy to provide them. Uh, just one question on that, and I'm just going by my memory, which may be incorrect, because I know one of the school task force members presented um, s some figures um, for the three different options, um, two different in terms of educational configuration, and then the other one, Audison versus Gibbs. And I had it in my head that um, that individual member projected the Gibbs at 32 million, and we're at 25. So uh, they, they, remember incorrectly or? there were higher numbers projected mm -hmm. uh, some time ago based on square footage cost. The architect's proposals or, or excuse me, study that was presented had a Gibbs number and an Audison number. The Gibbs number was lower. Actual construction is just about $17 million, uh, but there were several items not included in the study. Um, when you add in, well, I should say the study had construction and soft costs to a total of $19 million. We then added in uh, fixtures, furniture, and equipment technology as well as construction contingency and that brought it up to just below 25 million dollars in estimated project cost Great. and we did so in coordination with the chair of the permanent town building committee uh, to assure that we were on the same page okay and now on to Minuteman which when we take the three separate votes do we take three separate votes to put them on and then a fourth vote for the order uh, Mr. Hyman? Uh, Madam Chairwoman I would say that yes I, I would vote each individual uh, question first and then have a last vote to say this is how we the order we want, with which we want to appear on the ballot and when we want the polls to open okay and I'm getting ahead of myself I just wanted just so everybody um, on um, scenario one which is Minuteman and um, I, I'll state my my feelings on it and then um, you can see there are th three options here uh, scenario one two and three I am right now strongly in favor of option one in, in the sense that um, putting something f forth to the voters, although I'm very comfortable now in terms of the order, um, that might allay some of my concerns, but basically when I met with the town manager and town council and I spoke to some uh, parents and others that we've all um, spoken with, uh, in order to put the most concise what's on our plate, what's on the table right now, into a debt exclusion ballot question, um, all that's before us is what is contained in, in scenario one. Um, my concern in, and I'll let Mr. Dunn and uh, Mr. H Attorney Heim, because both have two different versions, which basically says, puts forth 
the way I read it, to be corrected, that <clears throat> the first part of the preamble of ballot question paragraph is addressing what scenario one is, which is what's before us, what we're being requested to do. But then it takes it a step out, step further, to say that if for some reason um, the debt exclusion as requested by, or the monies as requested by Minuteman, that process falls apart, what Mr. Dunn spoke to earlier this evening, <clears throat> that we then have a backup plan. M my concern with that was, is, you know, we are going to go to the voters, you know, with uh, the coordinated campaign, and I'm sure there'll be somebody um, also coordinating another campaign. I'm not going to get into the specifics of it, because <clears throat> I don't want to violate any, you know, uh, ethics commission law or open meeting law, um, <clears throat> but just looking at it, and I'm fearful, and, but not terrified, that uh, people who might be on the fence when they see the two Minuteman options might think that we're sort of asking for, you know, a blank check. Um, it's either this or that, you know, we don't really know. There could actually be even a third option, who knows what, because who knows what happens with Minuteman in terms of um, uh, what they might ask for if the original request um, for Minuteman isn't funded or go through the process. Mm -hmm. The only thing that would change my mind right now, but I will go with the majority of the board, is the reason I say that is I'm anticipating that, first of all, I have pretty high hopes that somehow the initial request, even if you know one town meeting um, initially says no, um, and a lot of that is in part to Mr. Dunn's negotiations and bringing everyone to the table, that that probably still will move forward. And then the second one, which would be my question, that if that did happen, that it kind of fell apart and Minuteman had to go back um, to square one, just looking at what I anticipate what they would need to do in the construction schedule, that would put them in line with phase two of this um, building, rebuilding our Arlington schools, which includes Minuteman, that when we're ready to hit the ground running after the feasibility study for Arlington High, that's where, the, number one, we could put what the new Minuteman option request is, and number two, they're going to need that time to uh, do all that. Am I going to? I didn't say it. I'm, I'm going to take that one. No, I, I, I think that's fair. I, I think if the MSBA project fails, it would be probably between 12 to 18, maybe 24 months before a distinct project or plan was agreed upon. I can't guarantee that, but. And just my last comments on that is just thinking, A, working for a successful debt exclusion, and B, giving out all the information that we have um, before us, if we sort of have this nebulous hanging in there, and it's going to take them the same time as when Arlington High finishes a feasibility study and we move on, and it almost seems like a natural marriage to me that, you know, 18 months, 24 months in the future, we have Arlington High School after feasibility study, we have Minuteman after, if the initial what's before us gets turned down, they do their due diligence, get their feasibility plan for whatever's new architects, and the two appear on the ballot the same. So with that, Mr. Dunn, I didn't mean to. Um, I do prefer scenario two, the one with the or, and uh, I think you'd, you're correctly anticipating one of the things that I'm worried about, which is that uh, Minuteman is going to cost, month, the, like there's going to be capital costs associated with Minuteman no matter what happens. And uh, by putting the, the, what I'm referring to as the or version, the scenario two, then we get to have, um, we have relief um, in our budget for either plan. And so I agree that it is possible that we that it, that it might work out that the uh, we could do so as I mean as we voted our last meeting we said there's going to be we've got three uh, two debt exclusions and an override in our future uh, you know, we've got this one that we were June 14th we've got the Arlington High School full rebuild and we've got the operating override and so we could hypothetically put Minuteman on one or the other of those depending upon uh, that. I would rather do it now. I'd rather get it out of the way. Um, and I feel, and I share your concern and goal of getting the voters on June 14th to say yes. And um, I feel like uh, I feel like we can make the case that says Minuteman's going to cost us money, whether it's from column A or whether it's from column B. It's going to cost us money. This is the the time to to vote yes. Um, that said, I think 
I, I think I share what something that I think I heard you say, which is that um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm prepared to support either option going forward. Uh, I prefer two, but I would, be, I, you know, if the will of the board is to go with one, then I'll be happy to support that uh, through the um, tonight and through the override process. And just quickly, and then I'll call on my colleagues, Mr. Burnham, Mr. Carroll. My my only concern is if the first uh, request is not successful. Um, if if it is successful, we have it there. We have the money allocated. If it's not successful. Um, basically what we're saying to the voters is vote the second part of the or, but we don't really know until A, its initial request is not successful, and B, we really don't know how much it is yet. And um, my thinking is going to the voters, I w I, we all want to be very concise and precise in terms of, and the town manager will do this with the uh, assistant town manager and others, in terms of this is what we need to do, this is what the costs are, um, and this is what we're asking for. And my feeling is putting that or in right now, we don't know that until three other dominoes fall, which include, you know, what I would like to do is when we go to the voters, if we, we flip to the second scenario, we already know, because right now we don't know that. And to me, which I totally respect, kind of like chess, we're thinking three moves out, but we, we're still at the first move. But um, I'm monopolizing. Um, so, when when would we have that information for the or? Do you know? Like when? So for the rebuild. Oh, the or. Um, um, for the yeah, for the or. When for for the rebuild? When when could we have an accurate or you know potential estimate on what that would be? You know, I, I guess there's a lot of there's a lot of uncertainty about what the path would be. So if this project goes down based on Belmont voting no, there's a chance that Belmont asks to leave the district. Mm -hmm. There's a chance they'd be allowed out of the district. That would be another 40 or so students, maybe a little less than 40 students. And so they'd probably start to be talk, even on our behalf, about should, is Minuteman even viable? So we'd probably go through some cycles of trying to figure out, you know, do we want to stay in? Are there other options? What, is this, what does this look like? Um, at the same time, the district would probably start talking about, well, we need to do the roof, or we need to do, you know, maybe the boiler or whatever it might be. So I, I think there's at least a year before there's clarity. And that's, I think that's optimistic. And so, you know, and within that year, so that they need a new roof, they, you know, as you're saying, they need all these kind of upgrades. Um, if this, that exclusion was to go through with the or rehab, we would then use that potential pool of funds to make those piecemeal upgrades. So, but, I, or, I, but, and then I guess my, my, my thought process here is that we would, you know, we would have some sort of pool of funds. We don't know exactly how much we really need for these potential upgrades. So I, I'm trying to balance, you know, balance information coming in with funding going out type of. Yeah, and, and I, I, I'd like to provide more clarity, but I'm not sure that I can because yeah. if they, if the if the district chooses to pursue some smaller piecemeal changes, and they don't borrow and they include it as sort of operating capital, I don't believe, and I don't know that we fully resolve this, but I don't believe that we can right. exclude debt because it's not debt. Right. Yeah, it's it's an assessment. Right. Yeah. So there's there's the chance that there could be let's say significant costs, not million dollar, you know, multi million dollar costs, but significant costs that we can't debt exclude. And the manner in which they piecemeal it will be, will tell us, you know, whether they have to borrow or not, and that yet is yet to be seen. And then, and then we'd have to- I'm not trying to, to muddy it, but I think that's- Yeah, no, and, and then we'd have to take funds that we, you know, are lacking anyway, so. Yeah. Before I call Mr. Carroll, and if you're not prepared to do this, um, and if it's appropriate, could I, kind of put you on the spot and ask you in terms of, you know, what we're discussing here, um, just from the town manager standpoint or anything else that you deem appropriate, mm -hmm. if you have any feelings on. Yeah, so let me, uh, I'll, I guess I'll address um, um, quickly administrative concerns and then let's say public relations concerns. So administrative concerns is there is risk in scenario two, probably low risk, but risk that the MSBA would not be on board with having the or scenario. Yeah. The MSBA does have 
regulations that talk about having singular questions to approve their projects. Now this is a little different because it's a district. It's not us doing a project. It's the district doing a project and us doing a question. So is it highly likely that the MSBA will have a problem? No, but it's certainly a risk that we should be aware of in scenario two. So that, that's an administrative concern. From a public relations point of view, um, and then I, I guess, well, let, I, let me go back to administrative, I'm sorry. From an administrative concern, again, low risk, and the DOR has said they would approve this, but there's the chance we could go back to a different member of the personnel at DOR and have them not feel clear about how much was excluded as part of the OR question and have concerns about how we raise those taxes. We'd certainly fight through that, and I think we could be successful, but again, low risk there. From the public relations point of view, I, I think there is a challenge in clearly and articulately telling the voters what they are voting for with scenario two. Um, I absolutely see, and I also appreciate, the want to give us budget stability and also not suffer through a public relations challenge of having to go to the ballot again, you know, maybe in between this and the high school project based on what happens, and that that's laudable. Um, but I, I do fear that there could be confusion and lack of clarity by pursuing scenario two. Mr. Carroll. I have to say, I came in here really feeling that scenario two was, was the way to go, but now I'm, I'm, um, uh, I'm definitely leaning towards scenario one for a couple of reasons, some of the reasons that have been stated, but um, also, I, I think I'm actually somewhat swayed also by the good work that, that uh, Mr. Pooler has done on the um, projections of, of impacts to the, to the tax base. Those are predictive if the building project goes through, but if this passes and we're looking at the, the um, uh, you know, capital amounts as they are, they are planned out by the district in the future, those, those graphs and, and projections don't really hold anymore. They, they, they're, they're not valid. So I, th I think it does create a, a communications <coughs> problem in um, explaining what the full impact and the phasing in of this is, because that's, that's one thing that I think we also have to make clear in our communications to the voters, that this isn't all hitting all at once. It's phasing in over four years. Um, so I think I'm, I'm leaning towards one. Mr. Dunn? Two points I should have made earlier. Um, one is we have it. We do have a. The, I, rec I, told, I agree that there um, there's clarity challenge, but we've done it before. If you look at both of our elementary school overrides, they didn't have numbers for the towns. They said this True. is the amount of money. This is what we're going to do. True. And this one is the same thing. This is the amount of money, and this is what we're going to do. So we've done that before. True. The second point is that in terms of, um, there's a set of people, so for instance, look at the Finance Committee, which split very closely on whether or not there should be a new building. But they would virtually unanimously agree that there's a lot of money that needs to be spent on Minuteman. And if we make this vote only about the new building, we're gonna lose some of the people in support of this third question. And so that means that we're gonna get from, say, Capital Planning or from Finance Committee, we're going to get support for questions one and two a negative for three, which is a model which is less clear than I would choose. Hmm. I've made my, my case. I'll make my last case, and then I guess I'll call on my colleagues for a motion. First, I would say, in all due respect to them, the Finance Committee, Capital Planning Committee are not policy making decision makers. And it's we, the Board of Selectmen, and um, the School Committee, number one. Number two is the person um, chairing um, the campaign to begin phase one of a two-phase project, um, I, I would respectfully ask my colleagues, um, <coughs> especially if you're on the fence, really to make that campaign with the most success as possible in terms of going with uh, the scenario one, not just in light of the remarks that I've made, but in, in terms of the town manager, um, so that we can have more clarity when we go forth on, on the campaign trail, because I anticipate if we have the or scenario, Unfortunately, I feel the conversation around Minuteman will get bogged down um, for some people who might not be in favor or for some reason want to just talk about things, focus on that part of it, which we do not have all the information about and might pick up on DOR and MSBA, and it totally detracts from, you know, I want to have a really clear, pure, as, as uh, accurate as possible message to the voters, including 
um, when Mr. Chapdelaine and Mr. Pooler, which already have done the calculations, um, when they ask for the same calculation on the ore pod, we're, we're just not going to have that. We're going to have a ballpark. So I, I would, if you're on the fence, someone, we're all going to be working on this. Um, but, but I can tell you, as someone who's chairing it, um, I would really emphasize um, and respectfully, respectfully request we go with scenario one. So with that, um, if there's any further questions or comments, um, does anyone, do you want to start with a motion? Just, can I get a motion from my colleagues on the... Uh, I, I actually oh, have a question. Stephen, I'm sorry. If we, what happens if we start voting down motions? Are we, you know, can we just, like, are we binding ourselves by voting? I know we need a, what, a two-thirds or a three-quarter vote here, so. Um, it's yeah. not, like, uh, Mr. Byrne, it's not like a zoning uh, article at town meeting. Yeah. I mean, the town, the, the board of selectmen can obviously come back and try to put a ballot question on what you're really dealing with is the time constraint mm -hmm. to put it on the special election ballot for June 14th, and we just don't have that much time. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I guess with that, um, I, I have one more question for the town manager, and that would be um, how out of whack would our long range plan be if we, you know, looked at some of these improvements that need to be made at Minuteman? and didn't exclude that debt for, you know, with that rebuild language. Could you guess that? Um, if, if it was piecemeal, you know, little here, little there, it wouldn't be uh, dramatic impacts, but there would be impacts. If there was a larger scale project that was not debt excluded, you know, a full rehab, it would have catastrophic impacts on the plan. Meaning if they did a $60 million, $70 million repair that was not MSBA reimbursed, that wasn't this project, and we didn't have a debt exclusion, that would be very challenging. I, mean, I, I would say if, if the board voted on scenario one tonight and that situation occurred, as challenging as it would be, I would certainly be advising that a, fur, a further debt exclusion vote would need to be considered in the future. With Arlington High. Um, so... I think I'm, I'm leaning towards option two here. Um, one, I think, and I realize that probably gives us a 50 mm. split, which is probably not <laughs> where, um, <laughs> obviously not ideal when there is four of us here tonight. It gives yeah. your yeah. chair yeah. who's going to chair um, this and vote no. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, I, I think for, um, you know, to do, um, if we're looking at, you know, our, our long-term, you know, our, our long-range plan, for example, I think that it's a safer option to, you know, build in some, you know, some leeway for us if we do face um, a, a large-scale expense at Minuteman. And, you know, and that being said, if there's... Um, and I and I wouldn't and I wouldn't want minute like uh, I would not want a large scale Minuteman project on the same debt exclusion as a our high school. I think that that would be much harder that to take, being that there's you know th those would be two massive exclusions like that would be thirty on top of I think what would be a larger exclusion than we're facing here with um, the Gibbs, and I think um, that is something I'm considering. So uh, I'm. I do feel like option two is a, a safer play right now. Can I ask the town manager if, say we did option two, because in the first pot failed, and Minuteman came out with this outrageous rebuild that we pre-approved in this debt exclusion for 70 to 100 million, we would be bound to fund that versus- No, no, no. so this only would allow us to, to debt exclude it. Town meeting would still need to approve the borrowing. So mm -hmm. there, there is that protection. It doesn't automatically make you spend money. Yeah. Right. So the way that it's written is that it says that uh, the option two of the or is written is it says for any, it only can be used to pay for bonded Minuteman projects. And any bonded Minuteman project, town meeting has the opportunity to reject it in the exact same way the town meeting has the opportunity to reject it on Monday. Um, well, I guess how, how strongly you feel about this, because I feel very strongly about this. I've had many conversations with 
some of the core group that we've had. The interesting thing, I think, Diane, is that you and I are doing, we have the exact same motivation, which is to get the um, overrides, of, or the debt exclusions approved, and we have different reads on the easiest way to do that. I, think, I believe that we are absolutely aimed at the same goal, but we are, but we are not in agreement about the methods. Um, I can support the option one with a smile on my face because it's a good option. I think you want it to make makes that it, motion? I think it makes it harder for us to win on June fourteenth. See, I think the other way. I, I know. Think it makes it easier having worked on since when they want to close yeah. bracket and Pierce moving forward, just knowing <coughs> the nature of exclusions, uh, all the ones that I've worked on, the first one right. that failed, which I felt very strongly about at that point and uh, was basically asked to be quiet and, and, uh, and I will that's move, the first one that failed. I, I move that we adopt um, version one. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any further discussion? No, I'm happy to support it as well. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed on a motion by Mr. Dunn, second by Mr. Carroll. I thank you. So that is for scenario one on Minuteman, rehab or rebuild. Um, Madam Chair, I'm sorry, may I? Yes. I just want to be clear that the Board of Selectmen has voted to place uh, on the ballot for June 14th debt exclusion as described in scenario one for the Minuteman rebuild. Is that? That the was my, the intent of my motion, yes. Would you I like us to? Vote again? Nope. Thank you, okay. Mr. Dunn. Okay. Um, uh, second motion I'll accept from one of my colleagues regarding the high school feasibility study and its language. I will move the language as presented here. By Mr. Second. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further discussion? Well, if not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? And then third on what will be known as Gibbs and Audison edition renovations. Gibbs and Thompson. Oh, jeez. I'm reading <laughs> Gibbs and Thompson. That's why you have a vice chair. Gibbs I, uh, and Thompson, Mr. The Byrne. Is presented. Mr. Byrne. Motion by Mr. Byrne, seconded by Second. Mr. Dunn. Any further questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? And then the next motion can we take, can it be two part A, establishing the order of the ballot questions as well as the details of June 14th? Yes, Madam Chair. Motion by. I move that we go the order of um, Gibbs. Thompson first, Arlington High second, Minuteman third, and that the polls be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. on June 14th. Second. Se motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne and Mr. Carroll, so I'll leave that to Ms. Kropel. Okay, any further discussion or questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. And we now will uh, recess, recess and down to town meeting. I move by, yeah, Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded by we just Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you.